So I was praying this morning, and the Lord said, uh, there's somebody that was dealing with sleepwalking, and it can be funny, but it can also be dangerous. When I was in the Navy, if you were a sleepwalker, they would discharge you because the ocean would swallow you up. I, I, and I was on my bunk, and there was a guy that his bunk was next to mine, and at night he'd crawl up on top of me and say, incoming, incoming. And he was in shore duty in Vietnam, and he was trying to protect me from the shelling. So I'd have to kick him and slap him and wake him up, get him back in his bunk. And I told him, I said, do you want me to write you up and put you on report so you can get discharged? He says, no. He says, please don't do that. I want to finish my enlistment. I said, okay. Just don't crawl up on me anymore. He said, okay, I'll try not to. But he was in his sleep. Praise God. So I was asking the Lord how to pray uh, if any person was dealing with that. And I'm just going to have to be led of the Spirit. Praise God. I'm going to come over here. I like Leslie. She's a sweetheart. Boy, I got a hug from her the other day. Woo. <laughs> Father, I lay hands on my sister Leslie. Now, you told me that somebody was dealing with sleepwalking, and it could be a dangerous thing. And so I pray for her now that her subconscious will not lead her, but she will do all those things when she is alive, I'm, I'm awake, and fully prepared to make decisions. Subconscious, you will not lead my sister any longer in Jesus' name. You will not lead her in danger without her knowing it. I declare with Jesus' stripes, Leslie is now healed and delivered, and no more sleepwalking in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay? Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Have you got your Bibles? And if you'd open them to 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 1, if you don't have a Bible, we put the scriptures up on the wall. Right, Jamal, don't we? Yeah. I'm going to jump around, so I hope that don't bother you. Appreciate you, bro. In 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 1, Paul is writing to the church at Corinth, one that he founded. And remember, keep in mind, the Corinthian church was a dysfunctional church. There was a lot of people in there that were wackos. And, and they did wacko things. And he loved that church. And he was always trying to straighten them out. You know, that's what I've done here. They had a lot of wackos in here. Now we have really good people. One wacko straightening out another wacko. How can you beat that? No, we got really good people. I got the best people in town in this church, and I give God the glory. So Paul writes a letter, and he says, So let a man so account of us as of the ministers of the anointed one and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. But with me, it is a very small thing that I should be judged of, of you, of man's judgment, Yea, I judge not my own self, for I know nothing by myself, yet am I not hereby justified, but he that judged me is the Lord. Now, uh, people, you know, Paul was addressing this church, and they were telling him how to worship, when to worship, uh, what holy days there were, and all these kinds of things. And he said, you know, it's... I don't really take serious you telling me what to do and how I'm supposed to conduct myself in church and how I'm supposed to serve the Lord. It's a, it, it just does, I don't, I don't pay much attention to you people because the Lord judges me. The Lord is telling me what's right and what's wrong, and then I make a decision. And he says, it's a very small matter to be judged by you. Now, I've noticed people through the years that they live by the judgments of other people. Uh, there was a guy in our church years and years ago that he was a follower, not a leader. And he fell in with some guys that were pretty good, but those guys uh, got offended and turned away, and he just went with them. And I would seen him one day in a restaurant, and he woke up and shook my hand, and I says, I says, hey, good to see you. 
why did you walk out of my church without saying goodbye after all the things we've done for you? We gave you money, we gave you food, uh, we overlooked your weirdness, we did all these things for you. Why did you walk out and not say goodbye? He says, well, my friends left and so I did. Now, that guy is controlled by other people. And we don't want to be in that situation where all the decision we make is based on what people tell us. We want to make our decisions based on what God says to us. He's judging us. He's the one who leads us and guides us. He, he gives us things to do or to say, and it's our, up to us to do what he tells us. And if we do what he says, we're going to be successful. Amen. And we can be used of him. It's very difficult uh, for God to use a person who's under the control of other people. Amen. You, we've got to be free of that. And the Jews especially were really good at that, of uh, making up their own rules and laws and, and trying to put them on Paul. So uh, they, some of the, they ordered their lives according to the judgments of others, but Paul had very little regard of what people thought of him. He was focused on what the Lord said to him. You know, I was born and raised in the Catholic Church, and I, I love the Catholic Church. Uh, I love the people in there. I, I just couldn't, there was no salvation in there, and that's one thing I wanted. I wanted to go to heaven, but they did not know how to get me there, because it's all by works. But anyway, uh, when I was a Catholic, uh, I, I drank a lot, cussed and swore, and did all kinds of sinful things. Now, don't judge me. Uh, this, the title of this message is Judgment, so don't judge me. And all my friends and family were fine with that. I, I remember going to a bar and then walking out on a Saturday afternoon to do Saturday night mass and sitting there so drunk you couldn't even kneel down or anything else and go back and, to the bar and finish getting drunk that night. And everybody was fine with that. But the day I got saved and filled with the Holy Spirit and I started going to a church that taught the Bible... They said I was weird. Now I'm getting out of line. Now I've, I've gone crazy and I've joined a cult. I remember my dad, uh, my mom, I'd go pick up my mom to go to, to church uh, to learn the word of God. And my dad said, oh, you're going to another cult meeting, huh? And we didn't say nothing. And, uh, and then when my dad contracted cancer, uh, he got uh, Aunt Fee led him to the Lord and got him filled with the Holy Spirit and, and began to get healed. And he didn't quite make it. He's with the Lord now. He, so he has got the ultimate healing. Amen. Praise God. So it's a very small matter to let people judge you. And I've noticed sometimes I will, I will tease people and tell them what they should do, and they put me in my place. And that's exactly what they should do. Amen. I was just and I just tease them with them because uh, I, I like to see people who are solid in their faith. They know where they're going, they know what they're doing, and they will follow God before they follow anybody else. Those are going to be some good people. Let's, let's go, to say, uh, we're in 1 Corinthians, let's go to chapter 11 and look at verse 28. I'm going to read from this scripture twice today and, and take two different components out of it. And um, this this is, Paul is talking about people who are about to take communion, and we're going to take communion today. And uh, he says in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 28, he says, let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eats and drinks unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation or judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this reason, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep or, or died in Christ. He's speaking to Christians. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. When we're judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we would not be condemned with the world. So God's judgment, we all want God's judgment. If we, if we don't have his judgment, there is a possibility that what we're doing, we could be judged with the world. And we don't want the world's judgment. The world is under judgment. They're under the law. Anybody who is not a Christian is under the law. And they're reaping, you know, the, 
the rewards of those judgments. And, you know, when, when, when somebody in the world has a problem, they just call it bad luck. But when a Christian runs into that thing, we got to take authority over the devil. Amen. So, but we know because we've been judged and we know what God says, and it's always a higher law. So how do we judge ourselves? That's, I've always asked, asked God this question over the years. You say, Lord, how do we judge ourselves? Because sometimes people aren't very honest. You know, it's like the, the person who looked in the mirror, that, that woman. I think that it was a fairy tale, but it was based on a true story. Mirror, mirror on the wall, who is the loveliest of them all? You know, and so we kind of have that mirror, mirror mentality. It's, hey, I'm okay. It's the other people who are screwed up. Well, that's not humility. That is pride. Amen. And when you judge yourself, I want to tell you something, and, and this may strike you as different as it's something you've not heard before, but here's how you judge yourself. It's by how much you love God. That's how, now I'll, I'll show you a scripture that I, what I'm telling you this, but when you judge yourself, what you're saying, self, how much do you love God? And see, the world is under judgment, they're under the law, and they're under condemnation, and we don't want that. So um, you don't have to turn here. I'll just read, because we all know this scripture, I think we do anyway. But in John 14, 15, it says, Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. So that's why I'm saying, if you love yourself, I mean, if you love God, you better love yourself too. If you love God, then you're, you can judge yourself by how well, uh, how deep is your commitment to obey him. That's how you judge it. Am I obeying God? Am I doing what he has told me to do? Am I walking in the, in the spirit of this new man that he's created in me? You know, we're a new creature with a new feature. And it's, a, am I walking in this, in this life of this new creature, or am I still got some of my old bad worldly habits? Am I still a gossiper and a backbiter and a liar and a cheat? And a lot of those things, they... They're, they're supposed to change when we were born again. And so we need to judge ourselves. And the reason he tells us to judge ourselves because the world is under judgment. And if we continue to live like the world, we're going to be judged, and then we're going to wonder why, well, what God has failed me. I got all these problems. Well, maybe you are suffering as an evildoer. Be nice. <laughs> Praise God. So um, loving God is not a feeling. It's not a feeling. Even husband loving your wives, wives loves your husband. It's not a feeling. Sometimes you don't feel like it. Sometimes you don't feel love because, like I was telling the other day, Kathy was uh, frying up some bacon and she burnt it. And, and she's, she used to be a professional cook. But I'm going to have to help her out on temperature. You don't cook bacon on high because all you're going to have is biscuits for a dog, and they can't even chew it. But she said, well, I burnt the bacon. I says, I was wondering what that smoke was in the kitchen and why you had the fan on. And so uh, uh, she says, well, I burnt the bacon. So I, and I said, well, I'll teach you how to cook. Well, that didn't go over too big. You know, we love each other, but the feeling kind of went in the garbage with the bacon. And so then the other day, she had more bacon. I, so I fried it up, and I says, Kat, check. She says, oh, this is really good. And I, I says, I use lower temperature. Kat. <laughs> Praise God. So we love God because he first loved us. Amen. You know, and I, I, I think you know this, but when did God love us? It was when we were sinners. It was when I was in the bar. When I was cussing and swearing and acting like a devil, he loved me. He loved me so much that he sent his son to die for me so that when I came to my senses, I would receive him as my savior. He'd wash away all those sins and all the guilt 
and make me a new creature. And like I say, my, the friends in my family, they, they didn't like what I had become because I quit drinking with them. We'd go out snowmobiling or doing something. Come over to drink wine. I said, I, I'm going to pass on that. I'm not going to drink any wine today. So we used to do it. I said, well, I don't do it anymore. Man, you've really changed, Lamping. You're really weird because you don't drink and you don't cuss anymore. Praise God. So, and they don't, and so it's a very small thing to be judged by them. And we need to have that attitude that we, it is a, we don't much pay much attention to what people try to order our lives according to the way they think we should live. We are judged by God. God is telling us how to live. And not only that, but he empowers us to live that way. In Philippians, it says it's God in us to do the will of his pleasure. He's working. I says, God, I'm trying to be good and I can't do it. He says, well, I'll help you. It's, it's, that's, it's that easy? He says, yeah, I'll help you. And, and you get through it. And you, how did you do that? I don't know. There, there was some power. that I don't know. I can't explain how I did that. It's like Kathy, uh, she smoked cigarettes. I did too. Ever since she was a, just a young girl. She was sneaking them, I think. And then uh, she would smoke like two to four packs a day. She'd have one in the ashtray burning and one in her mouth. And I'm not judging her because I was no different. But one day she, she said, I'm going to quit smoking. And then she, she'll tell you, she says, I did. And I don't know how I did it but I quit smoking. And that was before we had Jesus. Praise God. So she quit. Hallelujah. So the title of my message this morning is, what about judgment? What about judgment? Do, is there a place to judge? And, and we're seeing here that you do not judge other people. Amen. You know, um, I don't want to get too far ahead of myself, but I've got something to share with you. Let's go, to, let's go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. And um, if, if, you read, if you read 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and you read from the very beginning, we'll, we'll pick it up in verse 7. And so Paul is writing to this dysfunctional church that he loves. And, he, and I'm just going to take one verse out of what he said because you'll get the gist of it. He said... Um, I'll, read, I'll read verse 6. Even as the testimony of the anointed one was confirmed in you, so that you come behind in no gift, waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, Paul takes almost the whole first chapter talking, uh, talking up the people of the church. He's telling them what God has done for them. He's telling them how much that they, that they should be loving God. He, he, he's... He's setting them up, but he's doing it the right way. You don't just walk up and start chewing a person out. If you truly love them, you will, you will pick out the fine points that they're doing first. You're really doing this great, but I think you could do a little better if you would do this. So then, so then after he, he gets in there and he starts telling them um, about the blessings of God that they can have, then he, then he comes over to the chat. Look at chapter 3, verse 1. Now listen to what he says to them. He's, first of all, he's building them up, gaining their confidence in him. And then here's what he gets. To, remember, it's a dysfunctional church. So in chapter 3, verse 1, and he says, And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk and not with meat. For hitherto you're not able to bear it, neither yet are you yet able. For ye are yet carnal, for as there is among you envy and strife and divisions, are you not carnal and walk as men? While one saith, I'm a Paul, another I'm, I'm a Paulus, are you not carnal? But you notice how Paul, first of all, told them about the blessings of God that they, that they should be walking in. And he was coming to the place where he was establishing a connection with them of love, and now he's correcting them. He's, and correction brings perfection. Praise God. And so he's, he begins to judge or correct them to put them in step with God. Amen? When I 
uh, left the Catholic faith and I got the Bible, I began to see there were a lot of things in here I was doing wrong. And, and, then, and then I realized when I made a decision to do what the Lord wanted, there was a power in me that enabled me to do it. See, as a, as a Catholic, I, I, I grew up in the Catholic church, the Catholic school. I was an altar boy, the whole works. I could say the whole mass in Latin. Never understood a word of it, but I could do it. And then um, when I got out of there, I went into the military, and, and I turned my back on God and became a heathen, a better, he, a better heathen, more devilish. And then when I started having those dreams of burning in hell, I got up and went back to church. And so I'm, I'm back in church, and I just... I, I just can't, I could not uh, find God in there, in, in the Catholic Church, and I just went down and I said, Lord, I'm looking for you. I don't know anything that I thought I knew, and I don't know where I'm going, what I'm doing, but here I am. And then my Aunt Fia was fasting and praying for Catholics, and a bunch of us got saved after that. And so um, I began to, as a Catholic, I would say, here's what I said one day, I said, Lord... I cannot keep all these commandments and I know I, I'm, I'm breaking them all and I'm going to hell, so why bother? I'm going to hell, I might as well just hook them up and go because there's nothing, I cannot stop doing what I'm doing. And when I got saved, there was a power that came in me and I wasn't, I wasn't dealing with those things by myself but I, the Bible talks about being yoked together with the Lord, and he pulls with you. And I was amazed at how I was able to overcome all that sin. And, and, I, and I got to the place where I could stand myself. Before, I didn't even like myself, all the stupid things I was doing. And I, why do I do these things? And so finally I got free, praise God. So correct, now... I want to share something with you that the Lord shared with me years ago. If, I'll just use myself as an illustration. If I correct you, you'll benefit. If I criticize you, I'll benefit. Amen. And so, are we correcting people or are we criticizing them? And then, you know, who are we to correct people when we got our own problems? Praise God. Now, I've been corrected a lot. Bonnie's corrected me. Joe McCroskey has corrected me over and over and over. Uh, other, other ministers. And I know that they love me and they're trying to get me on track. And I appreciate that. Praise God. But they've never criticized me. Everything they said and I did, I benefited from it. Years ago, years ago, we had a lady in the church that was out there. She was, she was just a hard Christian to deal with. And she was pulling women aside and telling them a bunch of stuff and, and, and doing a bunch of stuff with them. In fact, one time we got a new lady come to church and I seen this lady go after her and I went and warned her. And she come back a couple weeks later, thank you for warning me. She tried to get me to do some weird stuff. Well, we had a, there was a party or a get-together of Christians in the church, and I went to that, and uh, they were talking about this lady, and this guy, here's what this guy told me. He says, Pastor, that when a shepherd has some sheep, and he has a sheep that keeps wandering and getting out, he breaks their legs so they can't leave. And I said, what? So you're telling me to go break her leg? He says, well, not. Not physically, but you got to do something. I said, no. If you, listen, if you don't want to be in the flock, go. Go somewhere where, where you can be fed. But at least, you know, go be fed. I ran into a, a lady at Walmart the other day. i got to tell you about this, Bonnie. And I remember she used to come to church here. And she, she's a really sweet lady. And I haven't seen her for years. And I says, gosh, you look familiar. And she Oh, now I remember who you are. And I gave her a hug and stuff. And I said, I said, you know, 
we've kept a chair open for you. She says, oh, well, we go to a different church now. I says, oh, that's good. Praise God. I'm glad you're going somewhere. And she says, yeah. I says, you, so you stayed in contact with Lord? She says, oh, yes. I said, that's important. Keep going, sister. Praise God. But, you, you know, you can't. I didn't want to break her leg and bring her back in. Then somebody's you got to have wheelchair stuff, and you got to have <laughs> crutches. And then, then people get mad at you. Why'd you break her leg? Well, it's a very small thing to be judged by that guy. <laughs> Praise God. All right, let's go to 1 Peter chapter 4. Correcting people is, is very difficult because there's a fine line between correction and uh, criticism where they say, fine, you, want, you don't want to be in this church and I'll just leave. And, and you've got to be very watchful how you do it because some people really get easily offended and out the door they go. Sometimes I'll see new people come in and I'll be teaching about certain, they hit some wrong, out the door they go. <laughs> Praise God. First Peter chapter 4 and verse 17 Listen to what Paul says here, or Peter says here. For the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin it at us, what shall the end of them that obey not the gospel of God? And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Now, Peter says... The time has come for us to be, to be judged. It's, it's, it starts in the house of God. I, I've, I've read this scripture many, many times, and when I was preparing for this, the Lord led me to this scripture, and I said, Lord, I don't understand that scripture, and I, I, I don't want to stand in front of the people and try to make something up that makes sense. I, I just won't do that. And I don't fully understand this scripture. So I threw my pen down and started praying. And I says, if you lead me here, then would you please explain it to me? Because I don't understand it. Why, why, what is this time that Peter's talking about that judgment begins in the house of God? And then I, it, it didn't take a couple of minutes and the Holy Spirit began to minister this scripture to me. What he's talking about is this. The time he's talking about has come. He's talking about Jesus dying on the cross and causing these people to be born again. And now they have the Holy Spirit within them. And so now they can, now they can endure the judgment so that they do not be judged with the world. So the judgment begins in the church because now we're born again. And so we can handle the judgment. And it begins in the church, it begins in the church because we're born again, and that judgment is good for us. But he, but he says, where will the world appear? The world has no chance. Their judgment is for being sinners. I was reading in Dakes, he says, they have no way of ever coming into the, uh, into the kingdom. But for us... <coughs> I told her, she's, Leslie said to leave early, and I said, if you see me crying, just ignore me. <laughs> Be blessed, sister. Praise God. So we can, we can have judgment now because we're born again. Praise God. And so it has to begin in the church, and then it's going to go into the world. But if we, what we need to do is get the world saved into our church, churches, churches. We're not the only church that teaches the Bible, thank God. And then he says, verse 19, Therefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to him in well-doing as unto a faithful cre creator. So the, this time, uh, the ungodly and sinner have no chance for redemption, but we can be judged now because we're born again. Before, judgment was of the law, but everybody was spiritually dead. Now we're spiritually alive. Praise God. We want God to judge us. We want God to tell us if we're on the right track or if we're getting off. We want to finish our course 
We don't, like, like Gloria Copeland said, we don't want to stand before God. We want to hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant. We don't want to stand before God and say, well, did you get that? I took me a while too. Praise God. All right, let's, we're almost done. Let's go back to Romans chapter 14. The church now can be judged because they're born again. And we can be judged in righteousness. Do you know that we get the same judgment as Jesus? Uh, You've got to show me that in the Bible, Jerry. Well, we're joint heirs. We get what he gets. Praise God. So Romans 14, uh, chapter 14 and verse 10, Paul says, Why do you judge your brother, or why do, thou, why do you set it not your brother, for we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. That's a great white judgment. For it, is, uh, for it is written, as I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess. So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. So man's judgment make others conform to their way of thinking. But our, our judgment... I can't, I can't even read my writing. Our judgment will, can lead, uh, what I, oh, our judgment of others, oh, I said, I said, when we judge others, we can lead them into temptation. We should not do it. Kenneth Copeland was praying one day and he said, Lord, what is the biggest problem you have in your body of Christ? He said, and the Lord shot back really quick and said, Son, the biggest problem I have is your dogged determination to correct one another. You know, and you, you hear about some of these churches doing things. That's none of our business. Amen. They answer to God, not to us. You know, I've had people say, Why don't you go down there and talk to that pastor and tell him what he's doing wrong? That's not my place. My place is to judge myself. I've got my hands full judging myself. I don't have time or an anointing to judge other people. Praise God. And I see people acting funny and everything else, and it's none of my business. But if they come in here and do it, uh, we had a lady one time that we had, we had a meeting in here. We had other churches come in here. And this lady came, and she came from the front and started dancing all over in the front. Just everywhere, dancing and throwing herself around. And I believe in dancing in church. That's, that's not the problem. But, but she, had, she had never been here before. And what she was doing was drawing attention to herself. And, and so next Sunday she came back and I met her in the back and I said, Sis, I'm so glad you're coming to church here. We really appreciate you. Now, i gotta, I got to speak to you about something. You're new here, and so when you come up and dance, uh, you're drawing a lot of attention to yourself and taking it away from the Holy Spirit. Would you please just sit in the back and enjoy the word and be blessed, and once we get to know you, then you can come up and dance because I, I believe in people you know, expressing themselves before the Lord. And she says, fine, and she walked out. And I went to, this, I went to a, a friendly, I went to a church, of my friend, the friendly pastor, and there she was in the back. <laughs> they wouldn't let her dance there either. <laughs> Praise God. <clears throat> I'll I tell, tell you a good one. I, I think this is okay. We had a, a lady come to church, and I think Shirley led her to the Lord. She was a stripper. Yeah. Shirley went, she was a stripper. I think it was in the hospital. She had a miscarriage or something. Or something like that. You can correct me later. I'll take it. Anyway, Shirley led her to the Lord. And she came to church. And, and uh, she got saved and filled with the Holy Spirit. She's a, just a sweet young lady. And she's, she was an ex-stripper. And uh, she came here. And she met a guy and married him. And they had a baby. Uh, she came all the time. And we just really appreciated her. She wore 
she wore a jacket that had the name of the strip club she was uh, and it upset some people didn't who cares who cares what you wear i see i seen our praise and worship leader this morning wear a cabela shirt well, i strictly shop at bass pro you know let let's get all fuzzy about that so this young lady and her husband were sitting on the front row and she had her baby and I'm over here preaching and just getting and she's right in front of her. She just lifts up her shirt, puts the baby on and nurses the baby. So I preached over here for a while <laughs> and I'm, I said, Lamping, don't you say a word. Don't say a word. And I would glance down. I wasn't, I wasn't looking at the nudity it was all the tattoos in that area. And I, 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 just, I just, you know, I'm not going to judge her. So I just stayed with the word. And, and to this day, I'm still friends with this lady. And they've got, in fact, her daughter comes to church here occasionally. And her daughter's name is Angel. And she's always welcome here. She's always having problems. And it's okay. We always give her a hug and welcome her. Praise God. Amen. Amen. So, um, so in verse 13, let us not therefore judge one another anymore, but judge this rather that no man put a stumbling block, stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way. So our, our judgment can lead people into temptation. They don't need to be judged. Praise God. Uh, there was a prophecy when I, and I was at a Kenneth Copeland meeting. There was a prophecy, and I don't, I think it might have been from Kenneth Copeland, but he said, he said, pastors, be ready because I'm sending people to your churches and they don't look like regular Christians. Some of them are going to have tattoos from head to toe. Their hair is in corn rolls and they're going to have piercings and jewelry and weird clothes. And he said, love on them, and present me to them. And so, you know, it doesn't matter who you are. You're welcome here. Praise God. All right, I got one more scripture, then we'll kind of start to close. It's in um, Luke Gos Luke's Gospel, chapter 10. Luke, 10, oh, you know this scripture. Luke 10, 17. Remember this scripture? Uh, Jesus sent 70 before his face or with his power. And the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through your name. And he said unto them, Behold, uh, be, I beheld Satan as lightning fallen from heaven. So the devil was judged. His, he lost his place in heaven, and God judged him. Do you know why there's no redemption for the devil? It's because he didn't have a tempter. So he's already been judged. He, he, like Kenneth Copeland says, ship his saddle home. Praise God. Now, when, he, when Jesus came and spoiled principalities and then translated us into the kingdom of his dear son, the devil cannot be in our kingdom. The devil cannot be in the kingdom of God. The devil's here, but he cannot be in the kingdom. Praise God. That's good news. He lost his place in heaven, and he's been judged. Hallelujah. And then 19 says, Behold, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions. Those are identifications of demons. And over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Notwithstanding to this, rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather that your names are written in heaven. So the Lord has given us power in his name to execute the judgment that God put on him. That's why we can tell the devil where to go and what to do. I, I, was, uh, I, always, I tell you this all the time. When I'm in the morning praying for you, then I spend a little time worshiping the Lord and I always tell the devil, I invite him into my praise service, and I command him to get on his knees and worship the Lord. I think Greg sang, a, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Did you do that this morning? And so I, I said that. See that devil? That's what the song says. You have to praise the Lord. 
you have to because I, I tell you to. I get to. And I make sure he knows that. And he hates that. Praise God. But he's been judged. And with the name of Jesus, we can keep him judged. He got kicked out of the kingdom, and he, uh, out of the kingdom of heaven. And we keep him out of the kingdom of God that we've been translated into. We do not let him bully us around or give us sickness or disease or po poverty or lack. Amen? Amen? Praise God. All right. I uh, got... Would you go to John's Gospel, chapter 10 and verse 10? We're going to receive tithes and offerings this morning. Praise God. If you're a visitor from another church, um, keep your tithe and give it to your church. If you want to sow seed, that's between you and God. The church is debt-free. We don't borrow money. We, sow, we, we tithe and we sow seed, and that's how we stay above the evil that's in this world. In John 10.10, 10, you know this scripture, Jesus said, The thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and destroy. But I've come to give, give you might have life. And now the, the message translation says, I've come to give you a life, life better than you ever dreamt of. So, so we, are the, we, are, we have two different choices here. We can let the devil steal from us, or we can yield to the life that Jesus died to give us. Um, I, I'm living a life right now that I never dreamt of. I was, I was a welder in the Navy. I was a welder in civilian life. And I got saved and filled with the Holy Spirit. And the Lord called me to teach. And I'm not going to go into that. I didn't want to do it, but I did it. And then he called me to pastor. I didn't want to do that. But I did it because he told me to. And now I'm living a life better than I've ever dreamt of. Amen. Praise God. Even if I wasn't doing this, I'd still have a great life. Praise God. Hallelujah. So um, we can rebuke the strong man. We can rebuke the devil and keep him out of our finances. Praise God. Ushers, would you come forward, please? And we'll receive tithes and offerings this morning. Let's, uh, let's make this confession. God gave me power to get wealth. And the devil came to steal it away. God rebukes the devourer for my sake. And he gave me his name. I have authority to judge the thief. God sent me ministering spirits. That's angels. You don't have to say that. But to empower me to succeed. And if God be for me, who can stand against me? And every need of this church is met. We will never go in debt. In Jesus' name, amen. Can you put my music on, Greg? Praise God. After the ushers receive the offer, we're going to take communion this morning. Praise God. And I'm going to go back, and, and you, don't, you don't have to op open your Bibles. This will be on the wall, because uh, you're going to have your hands full of the, of the bread and the, and the juice. Got a, I wonder what happened to my, our Catholic friends when COVID came, because they used to fill the cup full of wine, and everybody would drink out of it. I wonder how they did that. That would be, that'd be kind of tough. Praise God. Now the ushers are going to hand out the emblems of communion if you just hold on to them, if you, if you want to, or you can take them right away. It doesn't matter. We have no religious things about it. You can, if you get shaky and want to take them, you go ahead and do it. Otherwise, we'll all take it together. Jesus, when he went to the cross, he became the curse. And he bore the curse. The curse is poverty and lack and sickness and disease and all those things. And he bore that. So we can have, uh, we can have wealth 
and we can have health, and we can have all the blessings of the Lord. I, I always tell him, this friend that I shoot trap with, I always tell him, he says, how come you always get the best positions and the best parking places? I says, because I have favor. He says, I'm tired of hearing about that favor. And I said, you know what I think I'm going to do? I'm going to write the scripture out of, that, from the Bible that shares, says I get favor. I'm going to give it to you. <laughs> but we all have favor. God blesses us. Things you're not even believing for or asking for, he just shows up. Like $42 in my pocket. That's favor of God. Good thing I put these pants on. Good thing I had pants on at all. <laughs> Praise God. Ben Priest was the, is the president of um, Tribe of Judah Outlaw. He ministers to outlaw bikers. He has a church in Humble, Texas. And right in the middle of the service, this man walked in totally naked except for a pair of cowboy boots. And he just walked up, right, stood, stood right there. And everybody, didn't, everybody just stood there. Most of them bowed their heads and started praying. He said, how you doing, brother? Pretty good. He was drunk. And Ben uh, ministered to him, led him to the Lord. I think he got him filled with the Holy Spirit right there. And, and he sobered up. He said, brother, he says, we're so glad you're here. But don't you think you've got to go find your britches and put them on? He says, yeah, I better do that. And he walked out and got his clothes. <laughs> So if we have somebody come in and they're a little bit different, just act like, act like they're people that God loves. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I, th I wonder sometimes, you know, the Bible says we have entertained angels unaware, and I wonder sometimes the, the strangest people you see might, not, might be angels. And God just wants to know what you're going to do with them, how you're going to address them, how you're going to minister to them. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Mm, thank you, Lord. Yeah, praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Somebody's been feeling um, a heaviness in your chest, like a congestion or something like that. And it's, it's, it's in your lungs. And the Lord's healing your lungs right now in Jesus' name. You, just a lot of phlegm and occasional coughing. And the Lord's healing you right now in Jesus' name. We got everything, Jeff? Christopher, thank you, fellas. Appreciate that. Now, back in... Um, I'm going to go back to 1 Corinthians 11. Um, and Paul says, Now, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death until he come. In other words, you are uh, living the, way, the same way that Jesus died and give his body and his blood, and we're taking that into our lives. It says, Therefore, whosoever shall eat of this bread and drink of this cup unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. Now, some people get under condemnation during communion because they maybe that's me. Let's, let's find out who he's talking about. 28, but let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eats and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation or judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this reason, many of you are sickly among you, and many sleep, because the communion represents healing as well. For we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged, but when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world. Now, who he's, I'll tell you who he's talking to about here. If you back up and read the other scriptures down from 17 to 21, remember I told you this is a dysfunctional church, and these rich people were coming in, and they, were, um, had, they took a part of the church by themselves. They didn't want nobody... They took, right, let's say all these people here, they, they're the rich people, and they, they didn't want anybody from this side of the church get, mingling with them because they brought in a feast. They were having all kinds of food and everything else, and they did not share it with the, other, with the poor people. And Paul says, he said to them, he says, um, when you come together, therefore, in the one place, this is not to eat the Lord's Supper. And he says... 
um, for I come together, church, I hear that there be heresies among you, so there must be heresies, and you must be manifest among you. For in eating, one, one, eat for in eating, everyone takes before other his own supper, and one is hungry and another is drunken. So they were totally have no regard for the communion table. See, that's not you. That, that was written for, for people in the church. Now, if you have hatred for somebody and, and you openly show it, then you come to that category. Amen. But we love each other. Amen? All right. Praise God. So um, Jesus took the bread and the wine and he said, take and eat, for this is my body and my blood. Do this as often as you drink it. The, the, bread, the body, it was his stripes you're healed. Remember that. When you take this, recall that with, on the cross, he was beat to pieces for our healing. And when the blood, when you take that, cleanses you from all unrighteousness. I, I had a really difficult time at first understanding that I'd been made righteous. I thought we had to earn that. And you can't do it. Uh, a man one time walked up to Kenneth Hagin and told him, he said, I don't believe we're righteous. When do you get, how do you get righteous? And Kenneth Hagin says, well, let me ask you a question. Are you a man or a woman? What? I'm a man. He says, how did you get to be a man? He says, I was born that way. How do you get to become righteous? You're born again that way. We are the righteousness of God. I mean, we have a right to be healed and to, and to be blessed. So eat the bread and drink the cup. Thank you so much, Lord. Thank you for your sacrifice. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. You're so good to us, so patient. Thank you, Father. We bless your holy name. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. See that somebody has some sort of a, an ailment in your, I think it's in the feet, but there's a peeling of the skin. Your skin just peels all the time. Uh, there's, there's something wrong. There is a, a disease or a germ attacking your skin. And I rebuke that, that bacteria right now in Jesus' name. And I call your skin smooth and healed and no more shedding of skin. You're not a snake. You don't shed your skin. With Jesus' stripes, you're healed. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Oh, thank you, Lord. Somebody, uh, this could be more than one person, but I perceive in my spirit there's some, some people, especially in the night season, you have cramps, especially in your legs, and the Lord is healing you of that right now. In Jesus' name, your, your muscles are, are binding up and they're tightening up. And I don't know why, but it's mostly when you walk a lot. And the Lord is healing you of that. And I command all those cramps to leave your legs in Jesus' name. Praise God. Somebody's got problems in your mouth. There, there is a tooth that is giving you problems. The Lord is healing you right now of that tooth pain in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you so much, Father. I'm giving you praise, Lord. We worship you. Thank you for your word, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Father, we have judged ourselves and repented of everything that was wrong so we can say now that we love you because we are keep, all we have to do is keep one commandment. Love you with all of our heart and our neighbors, ourself. That's all. Do unto others, you do, un, do unto others, you do it to yourself. That's the golden law. We keep that. We keep all the commandments. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the power to walk the path that you have put before us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you so much, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. 
Thank you, Father. Father God, as we dismiss today, I thank you, Lord, for each and every person that attended service today, that you bless them, Father God, that they hear the word and then go out and do the word. We thank you, Lord, for meeting our, our petition, Father God, everything we've prayed and asked and put before you, the new members, Father God, the completion of our parking lot, each area, Father God, in our teams to serve. We thank you, Lord, that people are answering and doing what they're called to do in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for our children, that they love and serve you all the days of their life, that, Father God, they hear your voice and they respond quickly in Jesus' name. We thank you, Father, for it. Thank you, Lord. And, Father God, as each person goes home, they arrive so without incident, and they enter their homes full of peace. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, a few announcements. How many of you have seen the movie The Sound of Freedom? Okay. How many of you would like to go? If so, I was going to go tonight at 420 if anybody would like to go. All right. Perfect. It's a date then. So no prayer tonight. Um, but if anybody would like to join us, we're going to go to the 420 showing of The Sound of Freedom. If you haven't heard it, is it good? Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Very, uh, it's Christian. So very much so. Um, and then we have Dana and Liz Niles coming August 20th to minister. They'll be here the morning and night service. And so if you've not um, heard of them or seen them yet, they are the missionaries, the main missionaries for AFCM. Um, Miss Bonnie and Jilda and I, Miss Kim, we got to hear Dana share some of his stories and what he goes through to make sure that they're ministering literally to the ends of the earth. Um, and so <laughs> stuff that probably you and I would not imagine doing. But what struck me about it is when you're called a God, nothing is too hard. What's the rating? PG-13. Okay. So 420 if anybody wants to meet us there. Um, and then there was something else I was going to tell them. Men's group tomorrow. Thank you. That's important. Men's meeting tomorrow at 7. Uh, you have a Bible study prepared, I'm assuming. You've been studying, so hopefully. No, I know it will be good. Men, please come and join the time of fellowship and ministry to one another. I love they usually do Bible study, and then they stay afterwards in fellowship and um harass each other a little bit, but it's part of getting to know one another and the people you serve. So um, I don't think there's anything else. Prayer team's going to come up. Uh, if you need prayer, go and see them. If something